أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم The heart has to come alive and when the heart is alive it's like a, a receiver and it begins to pick up the vibration and the signal and that becomes an energy source, a himma. When the heart is alive means it's picking up the energy, it has a tremendous zeal, a want to, to do, a want to love for Allah love for Sayyidina Muhammad and a zeal to accomplish as much as possible. Wuquf al-qalb, wuquf al-qalb to be vigilant over the heart. You have to contemplate upon the heart, it is the throne and the house of the Divinely Presence. The most important piece of flesh that Allah has given to us. When I'm vigilant over the heart, I'm continuously monitoring that my heart to be vibrant, my heart to be clean, my heart to feel the energy. If I'm not feeling it then I have to be concerned something's wrong in the heart. Am I doing enough of my salawats? Because the salawats are an energy. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. You're doing these, doing these and it's an energy force like a fan for an airplane. You know when you want to hit the fan of an old plane you would hit it, hit it until it would trigger whoa and it would start to go by itself. The zikr has that same reality, if you're not feeling it you're not doing your salawats, you're not doing the zikr that you're supposed to be doing it and your heart is like dying and as a result of that you're distracted and interested in more of other things browsing the internet, chatting with people you're not supposed to be chatting with and doing all sorts of forbidden or on the border of being forbidden. So means that we can easily come and test ourselves every day. When I come to the zikr am I feeling the energy, am I feeling the zeal and the excitement? If not I should be doing my spiritual practices, my energy practices. If you are making your salah, as soon as you give your tahiyat and salams, sit and just play some salawats, connect your heart, visualize yourself in Rosh Sharif. And as soon as you finish your salah, sit and make your salawats and say, Ya Rabbi make my heart to come alive. And make your salawat 100, 200, 500, 1000, 2000, 5000, 10,000, 20,000 salawats. And the more you do that salawat the more you are moving closer to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That presence brings a love, that presence brings an energy until you feel your heart is coming alive with the zikr and the salawat. It is the most important thing that we can do. See, I don't have time because I have to work and make money. Actually if you don't do the salawats your money will begin to move away from you. Your rizq goes farther away from you and as a result you're working even harder now and your salawats and zikr and ibadah become less and less and less. So the reality was increase the ibadah, increase the tafakkur. At the end of the salah, at the salah don't leave. At night when you're not busy at work and you make your salah sit a little bit and meditate that you're at the holy maqam. And that you want to make your salawats and feel that presence and don't let my heart to die and cry to them. That let my heart to be filled with your nazar, filled with your love 
filled with your energy. And as they begin to do their practices and begin to feel that energy, then they understood the secret is the more they did their practices, the more that dunya came closer to them. Because Allah doesn't need you to run for your rizq, you're choosing to run for your rizq and then you put Allah aside. And as a result Allah makes your rizq actually move farther from you and you start to run even more and then you're too busy to even come for Jummah. Then you're too busy to do your zikr, you're too busy to do all your practices and you find your rizq is very difficult to achieve. And that's not what Allah had intended for this creation especially for Ahlul Dhikr. If you're somebody who's been given permission to tune in to the people of zikr means you're then from them, why Allah has included you to watch. So then learn their system, they do lots of zikr, they do lots of tafakkur and contemplation, they read the du'as from the app, they read all of the salawats from the app. The app is a vehicle in which to put into your hands, most of it works offline, you don't even need an internet connection. And then you should begin to be vigilant of your heart that I feel it, I feel it in my heart. At certain times I can feel myself crying, can you feel yourself crying? Can you… if you can't shed a tear something's wrong. No, I just don't feel any tears. You're not… you have no empathy in yourself, you're, you're close to death that way too. If you can't feel yourself crying, make yourself cry. Put onion in front of you <laughs> and, and cry. Or when you meditate, look at the azab all around you. Look at these children in Yemen and in war where they don't have food and then think of yourself that a day may come you can't feed your children. Shed a tear for all those whom don't eat and they don't go to bed with a full stomach. And they go to bed hungry. You can't find something to cry for? Don't let your heart to become dead. An alive and a living heart feels and senses everything. Even the killing of an animal that you don't like. Even a, a dirty animal, they catch a dirty mouse, they catch something. Even the zikr of that creature that you don't like you feel a softness and a sadness for it because your heart is alive. And this is the heart of wilayat and sainthood. When someone says, how do you reach sainthood? It's not something to reach, it's not a maqam in which you're trying to achieve because you would be then like you're ascending for a title in a company. This is not a corporation. Anything you learn from the business world, you better dislearn it in the spiritual world. Spiritual world, this is a dissension. How much you can efface yourself, humiliate yourself, allow yourself to be humiliated, allow yourself to be nothing, bring yourself down, bring yourself down. As much as you bring yourself down, Allah takes you up. Not trying to achieve a, st a status of sainthood, it's trying to achieve a status of a living heart. Then my heart to be alive, Ya Rabbi. Then he says, Be a servant to my creation, serve them, help people, and help and don't expect anything in return. Some people help and say, Oh, I'm so upset nobody else is helping with us. Why do you care if anyone else helps with you? You want to help to be of service to Allah It's not a collective party. So they lived a life on thinking, how to serve, how can I serve? By service it's humiliating, it's not something easy, it's not something paid. It's a service, it's a khidmat. 
that khidmat brings rahmat. Otherwise what would be your struggle in life? Everyone's looking for solution. Some understand the code of what I'm saying to struggle for something but everybody has that in their family. Everyone is emailing us, I don't like my husband, I don't like my wife, I don't like my kids. <laughs> Give me a du'a to resolve it, there is no du'a. All there is in life is to continuously struggle and struggle and struggle because for Allah belongs the victory. Are you ever searching for what zikr to recite for a particular need? We bring to you the Muhammadan Way app, an all-encompassing Islamic guide, where you can find special du'as and prayers as well as comprehensive Islamic teachings. Download this powerful app now on iOS and Android. Struggle in Allah's way. Allah wants to see a group of people who will struggle in His way. Not look at something difficult and think, I better you know plan ahead, take care of myself and make some connections so I have a, a, a way out, a door. No, there's no door. If you think the ship is going down, you're sinking with it. If you think you're going to die, you're going to die with it. And you hold your hand to it and you struggle for it. How much you can endure of difficulty and struggle in the way of Allah not of ease. How we're going to find something easy but how they're going to throw many obstacles in our presence and Prophet wants to see how loyal you are and how much you struggle. We don't understand what victory is in Allah's eyes. You know we're, we're thinking it's some sort of a station, a prize, a, a reality and everybody comes to greet us and say, MashaAllah you reach sainthood, you're such a holy person. The saint is the one whom is the most abused and that nobody thinks he's holy. They said if at least a thousand ulama are not cursing you, you didn't really reach sainthood. Because your words are, are not understood by external scholars because they're wondering why you don't talk about wudu, why you talk about all this hocus pocus. The hocus pocus, energy, angels and, and malaika is hocus pocus for people because now everything's just external. If you're not speaking external, we don't know what you're talking about, it means no more faith, no more realities. But our life is the struggle. Good tidings for those whom Allah loves and make them to be a group that they have to struggle. At every direction deceit, you turn to the left somebody is backbiting, you turn to the right somebody trying to blackmail you, you turn in, in front of you somebody spreading rumors about you. You don't look for a solution out. But you should be realizing you're on a ticket in because Allah's now, you're in Allah's testing machine. You're not trying to get out of His testing machine, there's no more growth, you're out of His school. You know when you're out of testing machine, you shave your beard, you drop your tasbih and you go try to buy a fancy car and, and walk around naked in a club. There's no more bothering you anymore because now you're shaitan's murid. He's not testing you anymore. You'll have everything come to you and you think, oh my God this is so great, that's what you wanted? Or you put your beard, you put your hat and every single obstacle is coming to you from believers. We don't even have problems with unbelievers and struggling, strive every day, how am I going to pay this? How am I going to do this? How am I, how am I going to accomplish this? Because you're carrying a flag for Sayyidina Muhammad and shaitan is biting your hand, put it down you, 
shave your beard, take your clothes, get out. Every day, every day the shaykh has had 500 directions trying to keep everything together and in every place they're biting hands and literally they go home with pain from so much biting and attacking. Mental, physical, every type of difficulty, leave your post. Abandon your position and it will all end is what shaitan is telling you. Leave it, it'll all end your fight. And they can't because they gave their heart to Sayyidina Muhammad They keep telling Prophet better you take me, that I'm ready, I'll sleep tonight and let me go like butter, like a hair and ghee. I'm out. But there's no putting the flag down. There's no way to shave yourself and go out. Is there's only one way out of this operation and that's through death. To death do us part. <laughs> that's not to your wife but that's to Prophet And to death and that's not even a departure but that's an immense opening into a reality. We want to struggle, we want you to be loyal, we want to be firm upon our path until the day that Prophet wants to open the door and say, come back to me now. I miss you and I want you back in my presence. And your da'wah is finished and you say, Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbil So who's better? The one whom is walking upright on a broken path? You don't know the condition of the shaykhs, what they go through all day long. You just see them smiling. They don't walk around, well, everything's so bad, everything's so bad. You don't want to be a shaykh like that. Because Allah told them, walk upright, keep your head up and happy, even if your path is broken all in front of you. That's why there's no complaining. Everything is about a struggle, every struggle is Allah loves me. He wants to bring out my fragrances. So you're like a rose, if I squeeze you the whole earth will be drunk from your fragrance. And every time I put hardship upon you and every time you cry that fragrance is released upon earth. Our life is to be the rose. So the hand that continuously squeezes us, bring out a beatific fragrance. Be loyal, be committed and everything about your character Prophet is, is checking off, checking off, checking off that this is a rijal, that nothing distracts him from the path of Allah Not his shaykh, not anyone will take him off the course of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad You'll be tested with everything, everything. When Allah tests you with your life, with your family, with your children, with every relationship will be tested, everything around you will be tested to see if it is Allah that you love and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is your destination. We are in the month and the days of Qurban where the Lamb taught us the best of character. It had a family, it had an existence, it has love and care. And for our blessing and for our prayers they gave all of that away. Can't you do better than me O Bani Adam? That you're so beloved by Allah You can't serve without using your mouth to attack people. You can't serve without being loyal and being of good service. We pray that Allah give us the understanding of this qurban, to live a life and to be the qurban. The Ya Rabbi let me to sacrifice myself, let me to put myself on the table. For every time Allah cuts because Allah's knife is unfortunately too sharp. 
You know if it was one death blow it would be easy, we would be dead before we dead. And oh wow I reached sainthood but Allah's knife is a little bit dull. And every time somebody backbites you it's a stab, every time somebody hurts you it's a stab, every time life deals an unfortunate event it's another stab. And we find ourselves we're the actual qurban. Because what Sayyidina Ibrahim didn't accomplish, the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad came. From Sayyidina Ismail was the coming of the light of the most praised, the most honoured Prophet of all creation. The nation of Sayyidina Muhammad rises from that qurban. And what no nation and no companionship of any Prophet had achieved in the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that 124,000 Sahabi that would have dropped their life in a, in a blink, in an instant they would have accepted to be under the knife of that Qurban. They put their lives in the field and they said that, I'm going to be slaughtered to show you my example. What they wanted of a sheep, we are that sheep and Imam Hussain as went and gave his life, the life of all his children and grandchildren, witnessed their death before his death. Unimaginable, unbelievable, they are the role models of Ahlul Bayt. Not that you claim your title, claim all these things but actually it's a responsibility if you meet the real Ahlul Bayt, they're under continuous difficulty, continuous attack, continuous attack. People spreading rumours and stabbing them every day. And then you know that that one is an inheritor of Imam Hussain Not the people of ease but the people who continuously struggle because they're in, inheriting from that maqam, from that soul and from that personality. I dress you from my dress, I dress you from my character, I dress you from my flavour so that your heart is a flowing ocean of their reality. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with those lights inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad and Mustafa, Basiru Surat al Fatih. Click the link now to subscribe.